for me, they're more committed. They've put a lot more uh, energy and money into the system. And uh, we have some very big multi-store owners. Uh, they're very involved in the Franchise Advisory Council. They're always trialling things. And our one unit franchisees look up to them as leaders and they would be the people that they would ring if they want some help. You know, multi-unit franchisees having a larger investment in the brand than single unit franchisees, you know, clearly um, have a little bit more power um, because they've got more invested, they have more to lose. Uh, and so therefore they, they demand a little more than, than the single unit franchisee would. And sometimes it makes the franchisor uncomfortable if the franchisees are getting large in proportion uh, to the system size. But I think those are unwarranted uh, concerns because uh, I think that those franchisees, by virtue of having so much capital uh, and so much at stake in that brand, should be seen more as partners. Uh, and there should not be this, you know, the ego wars and, and you know, they should not feel threatened uh, by multi-unit franchisees, um, I think, because those franchisees are actually investing in your system. Uh, they're making a financial commitment to your system, so treat them with respect. Um, and I think most multi-unit franchisees, we know that the final authority is the franchisor because we signed up for that system. Uh, but I think we like to be listened to. Um, and franchisors that have an open communication policy um, actually do better because they don't have to take the advice, but it's important to have an open mind and listen to the ideas that the multi-unit franchisee is bringing to them. Um, because they're in the field, you know, they're they're interacting with the customers every day. So it's it's important to listen to what those multi-unit franchisees have to say.